Hey, it's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Baofeng UV5RM Plus GPS from Radiotity. We'll get to it right after this. The items come in the box. You get this Tactical TED earpiece microphone setup, antenna, a wall wart with USB A to C charging cable. There is no charging cradle. This belt clip, the screws are affixed to the back of the radio, owner's manual, external microphone, programming cable, 2500 milliamp hour battery, and the radio itself. The owner's manuals have greatly improved over the years. This one, I didn't have any issues reading it, going through anything, figuring out what they were talking about. They do give you all the usual stuff, like a description of all the parts of the radio, all the icons on the screen, different basic instructions. There's a section in here for the GPS section. Right here. Some troubleshooting guides and shortcuts. Gives you all the menu items and what they are. DCS and CTCSS code tables. That's pretty much it for the menu, but again, it is easy to read. You don't need a translator for it. Let's take a quick look around this radio. You have the push talk. You have the SK1 and SK2 button. These buttons are programmable. On the top, for your antenna, this area used to have the flashlight in it, but now they have the GPS there. You have your power and volume knob. On the right side, you pull this flap down. And you have a K1 plug for external microphone and programming cable. On the front, I believe it's a 1.77 inch screen. VFO memory button. This switches from channel A to B. This has to do with GPS and sending your location and information to another one of these radios. This exits you out of the menu. This puts you in the menu. You can move around the menu as well as frequencies you've programmed. And then you have your usual tin key for doing certain quick functions and entering repeater names and the like. On the back with the battery, as you can see this little door here, this is USB-C. This is a USB chargeable battery, very handy like the fact that they put the USB-C charger here so that you can stand the radio up while charging. Also your belt clip affixes to the radio and not the battery. To release the battery, you just use this button right here, push it down, the battery comes out. And as you can see inside the studio here, the screen is very easy to read. It looks great. However, it's a little more difficult to read, especially in direct sunlight. You're going to have to get in the shade somewhere or shield it to be able to remotely see it out in the sun. Time of filming this video. This radio is currently going for $35.99. Regular $44.99. Now the saying it's a 10 watt radio, again with the 1.77 inch screen. It has 640 channels for memory and you can break that down into 10 zones, 64 channels each for maximum. The NOAA weather, 2500 milliamp hour battery, again type C charging. Has this group talk. Here's some of the features. Airband received, NOAA, 2500 milliamp hour battery, DTMF, Type-C charging, 640 channels again for 10 zones, frequency copy, and as I had said before, the SK-1 and SK-2 keys are customizable. Now with the GPS on this radio, if you have a friend that has another one exactly like it, you can get each other's coordinates and see how far away you are from each other and all that other good stuff. Airband receive, all-in-one scanning, and this has a thing where you can, if somebody's transmitting, you can get the frequency they're transmitting on as well as their CTCSS code. Here's all the bands that you can receive. And you can transmit on two meters, one and a quarter meter, and 70 centimeter. This radio weighs about 290 grams or 10.2 ounces. And this shows the different things you get depending if you get the US version or the European version. Now we're going to check out the power on this radio and see if it 
in fact will put out 10 watts. Now I'll take a quick look at the menu. And the way they've set this radio up, they've broken it down into zones instead of memory banks, but they're basically the same thing. You can add up to 10 zones here. However, the only problem I had, if you go ahead and you want to add a zone, then you want to name it. Like say I want to make this Las Vegas. I go to the five for the J, K, and L. I hit it and I got a bunch of characters. Now I asked the wife who's from Taiwan what these characters meant and she said it's basically the sounds of each of the letters that you're pushing. So it changed. So I have no idea how I'm going to spell Las Vegas in here. It just keeps changing to these items. This may be something that you have to input from the programming software. But again, you can add up to 10 zones. Talks about your scan, your radio settings. This has all the basic stuff, squelch, power, your Vox info, timeout timer. If you want the radio talking to you, which I do not, the only languages there you can choose is Chinese and English. If you want the beeps to go off every time you touch a key, which I do not, do not want a Roger beep. Adjust the backlight, how long you want it to stay on for, how bright you want your screen, what you want it to say when you turn the radio on, MDFA and B, this is how you want it to show. I have A set up so it shows the channel name and B so it shows the frequency number. You do watch, lock, alarm modes, push talk ID, and this is where you can change the SK1 and SK2 buttons for the long press and short press. Your commercial FM radio, automatic power off. I have it set to 30 minutes. You can go all the way up to 480 minutes if you want. You can set a password for it or you can reset the whole radio. Here's where you'll program a channel, and I'll show you how to do that here shortly. Some radio information, like your firmware. You can put a radio name in there if you want, an ID. This is for the GPS. You turn it on or off, your time zone, GPS info, no weather. You have it on or off, you can have the, we'll go ahead and turn this on just in case there is some sort of weather that actually happens in Southern California. You can turn it on and you can pick which station you want all the way up to the weather station 10. It does not tell you what the frequencies are, however. It might be in the owner's manual, I do not recall. And then it takes you back to the top. Pretty easy menu to get through. I like how they have it broken down into sections. Now we're going to program a frequency into this from the front end. First thing you want to do, switch over to VFO memory. Make sure you're in VFO. You can see up here it says VFO. Go into menu, program channel, and first we're going to do the receive frequency, and that's going to be 146520. Confirm that. Go down to transmit. And since it's a simplex, we can just leave this as it is. If it's not the same one that you want, go ahead and program it in here. Confirm that. Transmit power. You're going to do low, medium, or high. We'll stick with high. Bandwidth, you're going to want that wide. We don't have to worry about the CTCSS, but you might want to make sure they're off. In fact, let's double check the receive one. You don't have to worry about signaling or mute, busy lockout. Don't have to worry about the step. You can do an offset if you're doing like 
440 will be 5.0 and 0.6 for 2 meter. Your repeater direction, plus minus or simplex. Number 16 is channel memory. This is where we're going to program it into the memory. We're going to pick channel 3. Once you're in there, you can back all the way out. Switch back to memory. And then go ahead and find your channel, and there we are, channel 3. Okay, now we're going to program a repeater into the radio. First thing you want to do, switch over to VFO. Many of the feature functions on this will be the same as the last one. Enter the frequency you want. We want 145220. And you can either input the frequency here or when you get down here to program channel, you can do it in the receive frequency step one. You know, there, and you can see we've already entered it, so confirm it. Go to your transmit side, in this case, 144620. Confirm. Choose your power level. We'll stick with high just for the heck of it. Bandwidth, you're, again, you're going to want that on wide. You don't have to worry about receive CTCSS or receive DCS on this one. For the transmit CTCSS, you're going to want 103.5. Unfortunately, like I said earlier, you cannot hold this and just zip through the numbers. You got to push it individually. It's kind of a pain. So we confirm that. Don't have to worry about transmit DCS. Don't have to worry about any of these other ones. And then you see, because we input the, the, re, the transmit frequency, since we've already input both transmit and receive, it's automatically selected that that was a minus direction on the repeater. And it also figured the 0.6 for 2 meter. And we want to go to number 15 to store this into the memory. Back, back out. Switch back over to memory. And there you have it. Now if you want to put a name in here, go back in while you're in memory, go down to program channel, and then it gives you channel name. However, when I try and do it, I again get the little Chinese characters, and I don't know what any of them mean. So that's probably something you're going to have to do from the programming software. But you can see we have it all programmed up. Now we're going to try the scan feature, which allows you to, if someone's transmitting on a radio like you didn't program or just out and about, you can pick up their transmit frequency and their CTCSS tone if they have one. That's where this green button comes in. You just quickly press it once. You see it says seeking. Now you have to program inside, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute which frequency you want to scan for. Go ahead and transmit on the other one. And you can see how it popped in over there. And then if you want, you can go ahead and save it using the green button and save it into your memory. Now, if you want to check out a different band, just exit out, go into menu, go down here to scan, frequency ranger, and put in the frequency range you want to use. In this case, if we want to use 2 meter, we start at 144 and go to 148. Once you have both in, go ahead and lock it in. You can double check it if you want just to make sure you got it in there right. And there it is. Back, back out. Hit the green button. Now we'll go down to, go down to Clara. Now what it should say over here, you'll see the 103.5. That should show up over here for the CTCSS and it should be 144620. And there you go. Pretty cool little feature. You have to do some math and figure out the other frequency, but it does make things a little quicker, especially trying to get that CTCSS tone. Let's take a look at the GPS right quick. You can go into the menu, 
and it says GNSS. I have mine set to on, but I'm in the garage, so it's not likely I'm going to get anything. Your position. You can share your position with other people. You can request it from a friend of yours, provide they have the same radios. I don't know that the APRS is fully functional yet. You can turn it on if you want. Just make sure you're on the right frequency when you're using it. Also set your time zone. For me right now, it's negative seven. That's pretty much all there is to it. When I was messing around with it outside, it does pick up the satellites really quickly and locks in without having to wait. Now we're gonna see how the power fares on this radio. We're gonna start with the two meter and then we'll drop down to channel B for the one and a quarter. I have the radio set to high, as you can see by the little H on the right side of the screen here. So let's give this a whirl. The number you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to on the meter is this one right here. These large numbers, that's the SWR and we're going into a dummy load. Or 5.29, definitely not the 10 watts that the website says it should have. Let's jump down to one and a quarter. And on high, we're at 2.91. Now let's check 440. And we're at 8.58, definitely a lot better than two meter. Would like to see this a bit higher. Okay, it's my understanding one of the biggest issues with this radio has been the harmonics. Well, I have it set to two meters, we're on 146.520. I have it set to low power, as you can see right here. We're also gonna test the one and a quarter meter, 220. And I have it set to low power as well. So we're gonna see right here what the harmonics are, see if this radio is clean or not. As we can see on the second harmonic here, we're not at the negative 40 that it needs to be. Same with harmonics three and four. Well, no, four, three is okay. It is at negative five, two, and it's below the blue 16.025 microwatt line. But two and four are not, nor are they below the negative 40 that is required. So this radio is not legal for use in the U.S. on two meters. Now let's try 220 and see what we get there. Okay, now we have everything set up for 220. We're at 223500. We have it set to low power. So we're going to give this a whirl. Give it a second to settle down. Well, on 220, it does meet the negative 40, but it's just above the blue line. So basically, it is not a pass. So it looks like the only frequency you can use this radio on is 440 or 70 centimeters. I do like the idea of this radio. I think it has a lot of possibilities. I like how fast the GPS picks up the satellites. It's easy to use. The menu is easy to work with. The only problem is the harmonics. That seems to be a thing with some of these bow fangs. Hopefully they can get that squared away and once they do this radio will be spot on. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel there is a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here why don't you check out one of these other videos and again thanks for watching.